Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's American Partner Insider Call. This webinar will be recorded on behalf of Microsoft Corporation. If you do not wish to be recorded, please log off. You are welcome to post any questions or comments in English, Spanish, Portuguese, or French in the Q&A chat. Subtitles are also available at this event. Now, let me introduce Helene Cohen, American Scale Communications Strategy Lead at Microsoft. Welcome, Helene. Thank you. Uh, hello and welcome to everyone to our second America's Partner Insider Call. My name is Helene Cohen and I am the America's Communications Strategy Lead, responsible for helping deliver relevant information to you, our partners, to help you drive your business and partnership with Microsoft. I wanted to start out today with thanking you all for taking the time to be with us. Um, for those of you that have been to our calls before, you may have noticed that we're on a new platform. We are on Microsoft Teams Live, which we are very, very excited about. Um, we are also thrilled to have our Latin America and our Canadian partners now able to join us. Um, these calls occur monthly, and we are always looking for feedback and topic suggestions to make sure that this time is valuable to you. Uh, before we get started, uh, I also wanted to thank you in advance for your patience. As I mentioned, we've transitioned to um, the Teams Live platform and we've opened up this call uh, to all of the Americas. So if we miss something or if we've experienced, if you experience any delays, you know, please let us know. I know we had a little bit of a hiccup last month with making sure that the deck was available during our call. So we will be putting the link to uh, December's call. Uh, in the chat, as well as a temporary link to today's deck so that if you do need to follow along, you will be able to. Um, you should also get an email by the end of next week. It will come as a thank you email from the same alias that you received the confirmation of this call, and it will have information on how to view this on demand, uh, as well as how to uh, get the deck. So thank you so much, and let's keep moving forward. Uh, next slide, we've got a great agenda for you today. Uh, we'll do a couple of announcements. Uh, we'll then move on to a quick video from Nina Harding, who is our Corporate Vice President of the America's Global Partner Solutions. We'll then do a partner program update with Rob Reardon. Uh, we then have Reese Berry, who will be doing a session on delivering uh, meaningful COSO partnerships with Microsoft. And then we'll do a quick closing. Moving forward to the next slide. Uh, if you can take a few moments to scan this QR code, I believe we'll put the link as well into the chat uh, if you'd prefer a link. Uh, we would just like to get a little bit of information uh, from you about your business so that as we are presenting today and just for future calls, we're able to make sure that we are uh, understanding uh, who our audience is and catering that information directly to you. So I'll give everybody just a couple seconds here, maybe like a minute <laughs> to um, grab the QR code or the link and maybe answer. I think there's about five, five, six questions about your business. OK, next slide, please. A uh, reminder to mark your calendar for next month. Uh, our call will be on February 7th at the same time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, we know there were some big announcements yesterday uh, on Copilot. Uh, this will be the opportunity to go even deeper into those announcements and get uh, a great update uh, on Copilot for Microsoft 365. So please mark your calendar. Uh, also, the, the links are in here for registering for February, as well as if you've missed any calls prior to December. Next slide, please. I know and hope that everyone uh, got an opportunity to hear about the announcements that were made on Monday regarding Copilot. Um, I put in uh, the deck just for easy access to great blogs if you'd like to learn more and um, you know read the the official uh, announcements. And again, like I said, you will be we, we will be discussing more about this uh, next month. Uh, one more survey for you. You can take this one a little bit later on. Um, but as we continue to develop content to bring to you each month, 
uh, we want to make sure that the time is valuable for you and that you are getting you know the content that you need so if you could take a moment uh, and take this survey that will really help us as we continue to plan uh, our sessions for next quarter quarter so everybody has that and we'll also put that in the chat for you uh, next slide uh, staying connected with us, uh, we um, recommend uh, you signing up for the Microsoft Partner Program newsletter. And then also, if you haven't already, please join our Microsoft America's Partner Community, where we keep the most up-to-date information and have the opportunity to really collaborate and to uh, have uh, back and forth conversations with our partners, as well as the opportunity for partners to chat with each other. Uh, just a note on an upcoming learning event, which is actually tomorrow um, for CSP partners. Uh, if you're interested in uh, learning about the H2 acceleration moment, uh, please take a note of this and make sure you register. Also, just a quick note on our taxonomy in all of the uh, moving forward. Sorry, next slide. <laughs> um, all of the uh, communications that we put out in the Americas will have taxonomy um, or hashtag with some information following it. I'm going to move to the next slide, if you don't mind, just to give you an example. We put this, the slide in there that gives you the, the context, but then I also just wanted to show you, you know, as you're looking through any emails that come from us or any social posts, you will always notice that we'll have a thread of content with hashtags to really help you sort through content that's relevant directly for you and your, your partner business. Next slide. Quick reference on all of the America's Partner blogs that were posted in December. And then again at the bottom, just a reminder of the, the announcements made on Monday if you're interested in looking further into that. All right, with that, um, we are going to play just a quick opening um, from our corporate vice president, Nina Harding. So moving forward to the next slide, we can get that going, please. Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to welcome you all to today's event, where we will share with you some of the best practices related to co-selling. Co-selling is a powerful, powerful strategy that allows us to leverage our combined strengths, our expertise, and our networks to create more value for our customers and grow our businesses together. As you know, we have been working closely with our partners and we are very grateful for your continued support and collaboration. You are not just our partners. No, not just our partners. You are our allies, our friends, and our co-creators. Together, we have achieved remarkable results. And as we launch into 2024, we are committed to continuing that work, growing that work together. And I'm so glad that you're here to learn and exchange ideas, inspire and challenge each other and take on co-selling partnership to the next level. We have prepared a rich and engaging program for you today, featuring some of the most successful co-selling strategies, best practices and insights from our co-selling experts. We hope that you find the events valuable, informative, and honestly, a little bit enjoyable. So let me again thank you for joining us today. It is my honor to work alongside all of you, our partners, to delight our customers together. Awesome, thank you, Nina. And now moving on to our main presentations today, I'd like to take a moment and also please make sure you put your questions in the chat. Um, we will do our best to answer them uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, and as many as we possibly can. Um, but I'd like to now introduce Rob Reardon, who is the director of our AI Cloud Partner Program. Rob, over to you. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, great to be here uh, and excited to talk about uh, this topic. I mean, co-selling is, is in my blood. Uh, it's sort of my background at Microsoft, and I can already tell you that I absolutely endorse the very next session after me with Reese. I'm sure you've all heard from him before, but he's got some great content coming up. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, Rob Reardon, so based in the San Diego area, I'm always surprised at, at how many partners uh, are, are so near me uh, right down the street. Um, so look forward to seeing you at, out at the La Jolla office. And my team looks after the uh, Microsoft AI Cloud Partner Program. We just call it the Partner Program nowadays. 
Uh, so that includes, of course, the solutions partner designation, all the specializations, some great things that are coming from ISVs, uh, as well as some pay to play offers uh, like the action pack. And at, at the end of the day, our team's goal is really to accelerate partner growth, accelerate your growth. So whether that's helping you build a new practice, a new solution, uh, publish that solution or that offer into our commercial marketplace, or grow your practices and solutions, primarily through co-selling. If we're not selling this stuff, there's there's probably something wrong. Uh, and we have just a couple of times to, to interface uh, with this audience every year. And what I wanna start with is just a little bit of clarity, some, some reiteration of the move that we made last year to this year. Um, so last year, as you well know, we said goodnight to gold and silver. Um, and those designations in the marketplace is a way for you to differentiate your businesses. And we welcome Solutions Partner. Uh, and so we really focused on kind of this revamping of the Services Partner home, if you will, that you see on this beautiful uh, neighborhood map. And we also sent a signal that, hey, we're gonna be building offers for every partner business model that's out there. Uh, I'm very cautious not to say partner type because I know you have many multifaceted businesses. And so we're focusing a lot this year on ISVs. You, a lot of you have uh, leveraged the success and the momentum of ISV success and included in their marketplace rewards. And what we're gonna be doing in March this year, so we're only uh, a couple months away, is launching a way for ISVs to differentiate their businesses in the marketplace. And I'll be able to show you a little bit more detail about that. Uh, and we're already in private preview, getting some great feedback from partners and learnings uh, and from customers as well. Uh, and some of you also build device solutions, uh, whether it's IoT solutions or, or, um, or others, uh, we're going to be building some homes. We're actually already in the process of building homes to serve your needs as well. So as we continue to build uh, this neighborhood, uh, on the next slide, really what's critical for us to make sure that we do is that there's consistency and cohesion across these multiple homes for not only our partners, but really at the end of the day, the program exists for our customers. The partner program exists so that customers have confidence and clarity on which partner provider or which specific solution they wanna choose to go work with based on their business needs. And so to do that, we've got to align with our marketplace. We've got to align with exactly how our sellers are selling so we can co-sell effectively. And it has to be based on the background of how we differentiate incentives and investments for partners. And so on the next slide, based on your feedback, really, uh, what we've done is we've brought our partner go-to-market approach uh, for our program and otherwise into exact alignment with our first party structure. Many of you are probably well familiar with our solution area, I sure hope, uh, solution area uh, differentiation or, or our solution areas and how we sell, as well as some of the solution plays that nest under those solution areas. And that's basically an exact match with our solutions partner designation of which you see six there uh, and our specializations, uh, albeit some specializations have to go even deeper uh, into deep technical capabilities, uh, but it's all aligned again with that structure that we go to market with first party. So all of this is done with a consistent brand strategy, brand family that you see there that's been locked with the Microsoft logo now for uh, the last 15 months since we launched this program, this, this pretty significant revamp uh, in October of 2022. And on the next slide, uh, you'll also see that some of those deeper specializations that are aligned with solution plays of course, we reward you with that badge and that differentiation. You see the fly out uh, in gray under underneath the solutions partner designations. You get the benefits, uh, significant increased product benefits. You get a badge and most importantly, you get the access or you get the relevance and recognition from our sales field uh, that, hey, this partner has deep technical capability here. When you see an opportunity and we're in those MSM stages of listening to the customer and understanding what their needs are, our sellers can know exactly which partners they want to bring in uh, from a services standpoint. So I just wanted to thank you all, thank this great community for all the progress that you've made in, in really seeing that the solutions partner brand and that differentiation does resonate in market. We're already seeing plenty of customers require that for their RFPs. 
uh, as well as some of our newest specializations. Um, you can imagine we've got a lot of momentum, a lot of customer demand around specifically the build and modernize AI apps with Microsoft Azure specialization that just came online back uh, at the Inspire timeframe. And so I wanted to mention that for that particular specialization, and I'm gonna drop an announcement in the chat or in the Q&A now with a link directly to the requirements for that specific specialization, uh, we're gonna be going deeper for any of you that have at least half of the requirements met, and you can take a look at that website, go into Partner Center, see if you qualify for that specialization, specifically around AI, there is so much demand, so much customer interest in that. I'd highly recommend for you to go apply and pass that audit if you can meet those requirements, uh, because we're seeing a lot of a lot of momentum with that one. And on the next slide, I also want to talk a bit about our partner capability score. Hopefully, you're pretty familiar with this. I'll just summarize. You know the way that we differentiate partners and the way that we qualify you into that base solutions partner designation, which is a prerequisite for any specialization, uh, we're checking, hey, can you build it? Can you deployment? Can you deliver customer value uh, based on your skilling, based on net customer ads, uh, and based on active usage or growth and solution deployments? All through this normalized score that we have now, uh, up to 100 points possible. You have to hit 70 and you have to have at least one point in every category. Uh, so if you have no certifications, and that's all you have to do, please go take a look. There are so many partners out there that have zero points in skilling, but they're performing. And I get it, putting someone on the bench and having them take a cert, uh, it costs something, uh, but I highly recommend go get your one or two or three points that you need in skilling and get that solutions partner designation if you can qualify. Um, I also wanna recognize that this program has been in market for only 15 months. Um, it, it's easier for me to remember that because my son was also born in October 2022. And so while he's still figuring out, we're not quite uh, potty trained to course yet, but he's starting to walk and talk a bit. Um, we recognize that, hey, there's still some development of this program to be done. Um, and so I would say that especially early on, there were some challenges with data stability uh, or, or accessibility, and you saw your points fluctuating a bit. Those issues have since been resolved. Um, and just wanted to reiterate that our, our, our absolute focus and, and commitment to you is to make sure that we have accurate data that is reflecting your business um, every day. When you log into Partner Center, you see your score. And what we're also doing is we see an opportunity to, uh, it's a little bit different for Azure versus, you know, some of our more soft, you know, uh, modern work uh, in business applications, more of the software solutions to differentiate who's working in the SMB market and who's focused in the enterprise. And so as you, some of you may well know, we have enterprise and SMB tracks for both of those solution areas, modern work and biz apps. Uh, we've heard your feedback that you want a path for Azure, uh, for those of you who are focused in the SMB market. Uh, and primarily we've been hearing some feedback that, hey, the number of individuals that this certification or this uh, designation requires for me to pass any of your three Azure Solutions Partner designations is just too high. I've, I've got to put my entire organization on the bench uh, to go achieve that. So we've heard you. Uh, what I can tell you, I can't go into all the details because it still needs to be finalized and I don't want to say something that's going to change. But in the next session, either myself or, or Dan Rippey could come and, and share the details. Uh, but we are working on that path and there's something coming out quite soon. Uh, as soon as we tick in time, we feel really good about the data and how we can differentiate who's working in SMB versus uh, the enterprise and giving you some relief uh, if you are working in that SMB space to have a reasonable number of individuals uh, meeting those certifications. And still on this slide, I, I just wanna note also that, like I said in, in the On Demand Inspire session we had about sort of being new to the Microsoft uh, AI Cloud Partner Program, is that not everybody will or not everybody needs to achieve a solutions partner designation either and that's okay uh, and i promised uh since july of last year we've been building actually uh, a, an offer to bridge between those of you sitting with either just an action pack subscription or a legacy gold or silver certification or sorry competency uh between those offers and the solutions partner designation 
And I can't tell you all the details about that one either, uh, but I know this is an insider's call, so I'll give you a couple breadcrumbs. I'll just leave with you that the partner capability score is going to become important for more partners that are out there. Um, and you'll just have more options uh, that you can choose. Uh, nothing's being taken away. You will have more options to choose that will be a better offer uh, for you between those kind of legacy offers and solutions partner. And then the last thing that I wanna leave you with on the next slide is really focused on ISVs or any partner that's that's building and publishing a discrete offer in our commercial marketplace, ideally a transactable offer in the commercial marketplace. Um, as you well know, that's a, a key consideration for ISVs in co-selling with our field. And I can give you a little bit of insight into what is going to be their criteria for that ISV certification, what we call sort of the top floor of the ISV home. Uh, and it's very similar to what we're doing for services in terms of can you build it, can you sell and deploy it, and can you deliver value? It's just the measurements that we are leveraging are going to be much different, of course, for an ISV. Um, first of all, most importantly, as an ISV or an app publisher, what we're validating is the discrete application. We're not validating your entire organization. We're saying, hey, to the customer, this app is certified for Azure, Biz Apps, Modern Worker Security. And there's also some certifications that are coming on top of that. Uh, we're calling it sort of a fast track for AI solutions that are really deeply integrated and have their data in a great shape uh, and leveraging some of our AI technology to help our customers uh, deliver even more value to their end customers uh, in industry. So uh, certified for AI for healthcare uh, or financial services, for example, you see some of the qualifying criteria there. Of course, can you build it uh, is less about certified individuals in the case of IP and more about the technical criteria, the interoperability that Microsoft can stand behind and say, yes, this is interoperable with our first party solutions. Can you sell or deploy it? Yes, you, you might have guessed. That's all going to be based on marketplace build sales. And are is this solution actually performing in the market? So having a transactable offer that is performing in market is going to be critical uh, there as well. And can you deliver value? Uh, OK, great. The customer has now deployed it. Uh, what do they think about it? So a marketplace rating is going to become very important uh, for those solutions that are in market as well. And just having that social proof of yes, we validate that this is a, a legitimate, a great application that is delivering value to our organization. Uh, so in March, uh, this will be coming live. You see some of the detailed thresholds if, on this eye chart here a bit, um, but we will have all the details coming out uh, very soon. And in March, you'll be able to actually go apply uh, and get your solution represented and differentiated externally to our storefront, our customer facing storefronts like AppSource and Azure Marketplace. And in the context of this conversation, of course, the internal storefront that we have in MSX for our sellers to go choose the right solutions, having this certification or any one of these certifications will be incredibly valuable for, uh, for you to differentiate your solutions to our sales field uh, and gain more traction in co-sell. So on the last slide, in summary, uh, since last year and this year, our data is uh, getting dialed in, or it is dialed in and, and ready to go and stable. Uh, we are focusing on incremental enhancements to the program offers like the SMB track for Azure. Uh, we're even looking at that uh, for security as well, as well as, like I said, those bridge offers between uh, Action Pack and Solutions Partner and coming soon for ISVs. Uh, and we'll have plenty of webinars coming out. Uh, where you can go deep on that. All of that will be available at partner.microsoft.com. If you follow the America's blog, you follow uh, the partner program uh, digest and, or sorry, the partner program blog as well. Um, and really my call to action, like I was talking about earlier, for those things that are in market already today, uh, make sure you're going into partner center and you're confirming which solutions partner designations can you qualify for. And especially if you have say half of the requirements already made for any of our specializations, but especially the modernize, uh, build and modernize AI apps, I'd highly recommend you to go uh, ride the wave of momentum we have there. So with that, uh, I'll let Reese talk to you transition from, okay, you've, you've qualified, 
you have some great IP solutions in market or you have some of our specializations. Now, how do you get access to our sellers uh, and share deals and opportunities with our sales field and actually make money out of all of this? Uh, so Reese, take it away. Love it. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me, everyone. And uh, also, thank you for putting it right after Rob because he said he set a high bar and he just he set it up perfectly for this conversation as well. So I'm Reese Berry, the managing director of Card Partners. If you go to the next slide and talk a little bit more about that. I'm here to talk about marketplace um, and co-sell with Microsoft. Um, Card, we're we're a co-sell advisory service, and simply put, why we love co-sell so much is because all of you partners out there, you have you have your own company goals and co-sell co-selling Microsoft and leveraging the Microsoft ecosystem can help you achieve those goals faster um, and exceed those goals. So I love co-sell because I've seen so many partners like yourselves just achieve their goals, exceed their goals um, <clears throat> using the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'll go a little bit of what we're going to talk about here today. And so if you can give me the next uh, about 25 minutes here, um, my promise to you is you'll walk away with a better understanding of co-sell marketplace, as well as other, other benefits, some best practices for your co-sell success to really drive success and really actionable takeaways. Like I love, I love just putting things into, uh, into simple terms and making them ultra actionable. And so we're gonna leave you with some actionable, actionable things that you can do right after this call to ensure that you are driving success with co-sell. On the next slide, um, I like to start with <clears throat> really the mindset. And so having the right mindset going to co-sell is, is like half the battle. And so going into going into co-sell with a long-term mindset, um, this isn't like a, I'm going to do a 30, 60 day accelerator and you know leads are going to rain from the sky. This is a, a long-term strategic partnership that you're building with Microsoft. Um, and so going into it with a long-term mindset is, is the first key to success. And then the two dimensions I often recommend to kind of think through things in, in, in terms of direction of what you're trying to achieve um, with CoSell to make it super valuable is looking at dimension one is going to be your incentive stack. Um, this is going to be how valuable is it for Microsoft to engage with you and building that better together store. The second dimension is going to be that your general knowledge and commitment to the Microsoft ecosystem and CoSell. Um, and so showing that you Showing that better together story, uh, as well as showing your commitment and knowledge base, is critical for um, for driving success. And on the next slide, I have a bit of a uh, a diagram to kind of show that um, visual visually. Um, and so the the goal here is the top right corner, um, really where you're where you we built that incentive stack. And so imagine where you have that better together story, where it's if you work with me on this deal. Like these are the things that we can expect, whether that's either a quota retirement from Microsoft seller, whether that be how you're influencing Microsoft priorities, um, whether that be how you're aligning your strategy to to also align with Microsoft strategy, that's going to be your incentive stack. So being able to tell that story and then the ecosystem knowledge um, and commitment, that's the bottom one. So the, the, you're shooting for the right. That's what we're all doing here today. Like you just heard from Rob, you just you just learned a lot um about the partner program as well now we're talking about co-sell and so we're we're, we're committed because we're here that's fantastic and we're building that knowledge that makes us so easy to work with within the microsoft ecosystem that we're really just impossible to ignore and so i like to really just level set off the get-go of what are we striving for and so every action we're taking are we building that knowledge base are we showing commitment and are we building that incentive stack um, <clears throat> the next slide i'll level set a little bit, just a, a quick level set on. As Rob was talking about FY24, a huge part of CoSell is marketplace. If you look at if you look at the Microsoft's key priorities, a big part of that a big part of that priority is transactable in marketplace. And you might be asking, well, why? Um, if you look at some studies out there of industry uh, industry leaders, this is probably the most the most uh, famous one, which is 45 billion in cloud cloud spend on the marketplace by 2025. That's 84% compound annual growth rate, which is tremendous. If you listen to other other talks, you, you'll know that Microsoft is actually exceeding a lot of that in many in many ways when it comes to their marketplace uh, marketplace growth. So a huge opportunity here um, to seize as we see 
a lot of the similar similar aspects that you, that we see in like a B two C of uh, we all have smartphones and we can purchase applications through a, through a marketplace. Um, we're seeing a similar trend in B two B, and Microsoft wants to take advantage of that as well as have their partners uh, take advantage of that as well. On the next slide, um, the it'll talk a little bit about the <clears throat> a third of that taking place through a channel. Uh, Microsoft loves their partners, loves their ecosystem, and loves for their partners to build their own channels as well. And so these are things like the ISVs having a channel with their services partners, as well as services partners having a channel with their ISVs, and really being able to uh, mature that, um, that ecosystem. And Marketplace allows us to do a lot of things that weren't previously possible when it comes to uh, what was maybe a lot of a lot of times referred to as P2P or partner-to-partner. -partner. Um, and so building out that ecosystem is a huge, huge thing where we're, Marketplace allows us to do that really well. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll spend a bit of time on this one, particularly because it's a, it's a what's, it, what's the value <laughs> here slide. Um, and so I love this one, the value of the partner, um, so value to everyone here today is really, uh, simply put, the reason CoSell exists is that Microsoft makes money when their partners make money. Um, and so they, Microsoft invests heavily in their, in their partners because they want their partners to make money. Um, obviously, because there's, well, there's marketplace or cloud, um, they make money. Now, the, the, the equation is stacked in your favor, as you can see. Um, when you get this deck after the, after the call, I, I recommend everyone click that link um, on the for every dollar of Microsoft revenue. Um, ISVs make 10, services make eight. Great article by by leader at GPS that put put out there just to kind of talk through how Microsoft wants to scale through partner. Uh, really enjoy that article. When we talk about channel, uh, functionalities in the marketplace like MPO uh, or multi-party private offer, currently yes, only available in the US, but soon coming to Canada and then UK and then rest of rest of the world. Um, this is a huge functionality that allows, allows uh, the ecosystem to collaborate together and work together in uh, in selling through marketplace and in co-selling huge value there and of course incentives there's tons of incentives transacting grow is one of them simply put get your list get your solution transactable do a couple of transactions against it you get paid like who doesn't who doesn't love that uh, and that's one of many many different uh ways that you can make money um, by aligning to some of the microsoft goals value to customer uh the first one here is is, is the heat biggest one out there um, so, so the marketplace allows you to decrement a customer's MAC agreement. This is about a customer because they get to consolidate everything into their into their MAC agreement, whether it be uh, ISV license, like licensing spend of an ISV solution. Um, as well, I'd love to put this one also in the part value to partner as well, because um, that means that Microsoft is out there trying to sign, find you to sign these MAC agreements, which means that Microsoft is out there fighting for budget to buy your solutions um with their customers on a da daily basis and so huge value for you to be able to tap into those budgets of the uh, azure commit to consumes as well as huge value to the customer to be able to get a discount by buying in bulk and and uh and and do that of course discover discoverability is a huge one for uh for, for our customers as well being able to discover those solutions um having that kind of social um <clears throat> Social buy-in, having the rating system in commercial marketplace, all of that stuff that Rob was referring to, fantastic. And then of course procurement, uh, big value of marketplace is having that consolidated, uh, consolidated, consolidated bill and ease of procurement. Uh, the piece I like to say here is because there's there's always a bit of questions when it comes to the procurement value. Is really remember that we're at the the very early stages of this. And so if I were to uh, if I were to draw a uh, an, uh, adoption curve would be really at the really early early end of it once you get pure, like really deep adoption of, of a uh, of a commercial agile marketplace that's when you start to see a huge value in terms of streamlining the procurement process and a lot of customer adoption and so um love to see that one as well and of course there's value to microsoft sellers as well as they we incentivize that microsoft incentivizes their sales community to push deals through marketplace simply put Sellers are incentivized to sell your solution um, for you and with you. Um, <clears throat> of course, seeing that long tail consumption um, or build revenue, great one. And of course, um, sellers spending less time in the procurement process with uh, with their customers because of that ease of procurement. Another fantastic, uh, fantastic benefit. 
if you go to the next slide, I'll talk through two, two avenues of co-selling. And so <clears throat> for ISPs, uh, we have the Azure IP co-sell benefit. Microsoft has a great Azure IP co-sell benefit that if you're part of the uh, partner program, uh, you'll notice that's a trend, be part of the partner program um, to, get, to get access to benefits. Um, huge benefit of being able to retire seller's quota if you're part of this program, and we'll talk a bit more in detail about what that means. Um, as well for services or resellers, um, if you're a services partner or reselling partner, you can take advantage of MPO, which again, we'll talk about a bit more. Um, also, if you're, if you're not reselling solutions, it's a, it's, a, it's a great new revenue stream to consider when looking at what are, who are the ISVs that you want to build out your channel with, um, and how can you continue to own those relationships with the end customer, uh, but transact ISV, uh, ISV solutions. Talk a bit about that here as well. On the next slide, I want to just level set on some of the changes that took place, uh, some, in, some in July, some, in, some as soon as a month ago. Um, <clears throat> And so um, getting solutions published on Marketplace is super important. Getting them transactable is kind of the new standard when it comes to Azure IP co-sell benefit. And so uh, at FY24, you want to see those solutions being Marketplace transactable. Um, super important that we, uh, we see that. Um, and the next line recently as of, uh, as of December, um, even more great news. And so uh, previously, we had this this concept of we we still have the concept of top tier, uh, but only top tier partners were eligible to uh, to retire Microsoft sellers quota. And now, um, all incentive eligible partners, and so opening it up from hundreds now to thousands of partners that are able to retire Microsoft sellers quota, building that into their incentive stack of if we transact via marketplace, you can you can uh, you can you have an additional incentive to pull in a seller um, to that particular deal. And so huge value there for uh, for uh, uh, kind of widening the net of partners that can uh, that can do that. I also like to bring up partner reported ACR because it's a huge value of the top tier program. Uh, I do like to just call out that there's no changes there. A lot of misconceptions out there that there's uh, you know nuances have been changed, but um, it is a top tier partner benefit. Um, it is extremely important if you're a SaaS uh, SaaS based solution to participate in partner reported ACR. Um, on the next slide, I'll just kind of walk through the steps, the simple, like the simple steps. And so, of course, becoming a Microsoft uh, Microsoft partner. Number one, you just heard all about that from from Rob. Super important. <clears throat> Publishing your solution on the commercial marketplace, getting COSO ready. The next step, uh, making sure that you're getting your solutions listed on the commercial marketplace, making sure that you're uploading like build materials, whatnot, to meet the requirements of that. Um, arguably, the most important step is meeting that IP COSO eligible criteria. Um, there's tons of docs out there um, about the specificities of how to do this in Partner Center. Um, but once you hit that IP co-sell eligibility criteria, meaning you're transactable in Marketplace, you've got all your build materials uploaded in the Partner Center um, commercial marketplace section. Um, <clears throat> you now have that ability to leverage those, those MAC budgets, uh, the commit to consume budgets, as well as the ability to retire a seller's quota um, when you're when you're co-selling with Microsoft, huge value there. And of course, becoming a top tier partner um, gives you that extra access to be able to uh, report partner reported ACR. Uh, that was the, the top tier partner uh, requirements were actually on that last one of those last slides that Rob was showing uh, and fantastic program. Even if you aren't a SaaS, a, a SaaS based solution, still huge value to be in that top tier partner program because uh, nobody was ever upset over having a, a top tier status um, being represented that that way to uh, to a Microsoft seller. So highly recommend, of course, striving for that top tier partner uh, stats. <clears throat> Once we go to the, the next slide, I'll talk a little bit, a bit about MPO um, and what is it? What is MPO? And so we just talked about kind of that first section of how to like co-selling with Microsoft as a, an ISV. MPO is for really the selling and reselling or services or uh, reselling partners. We call them selling partners in the MPO program. Um, and so really fantastic benefit of if you're uh, oftentimes the selling partner owns the end customer relationship um, and so they want to maintain owning that end customer relationship and so what this does is allows them to uh, sell into their customer base sell isp solutions into their customer base uh, maintaining that that they are the point of contact for that particular customer sometimes opening up new revenue streams because it's so easy to do an mpo deal um, <clears throat> 
versus some of the complexities that it was uh, was previously to set up these uh, these engagements. But essentially, it's as simple as the ISV has a has an offer. Uh, the selling partner has a relationship. Selling partner um, sells an offer, of course, with a, some form of markup um, of the ISV solution, depending on the ISV and the selling partners uh, agreement. And then Microsoft does all the back end work. Selling partner gets uh, customer gets their offer. Selling partner gets their gets their markup. ISV gets the uh, the uh, rest rest of the uh, bill minus the uh, rest of the invoice minus the markup. Of course, uh, <clears throat> huge value to um, huge value to be able to take part in this particular program as well and set up that broaden your channel, uh, set up that like that those fantastic relationships uh, to be able to co sell. One of my favorite parts about MPO is you get to inherit your IS, like the ISV's benefits. And so if the ISV solution is, is incentive eligible or top tier, um, all of those benefits as a selling partner, if you don't have a solution that has those benefits, you can still leverage all of those benefits. And so if you're selling an incentive eligible solution, you're still co-selling with Microsoft as a services partner based on those benefits of the ISV solution. So huge value there, very easy to set up. If you go to the next slide, some quick kind of checklist items to uh, to set yourself up for both the ISV and for the selling partners. Uh, super important that both parties are set up correctly um, prior to the deal being executed, of course. And so on the next slide, you'll see there's actually some resources to be able to make sure that you are set up correctly. So this AKA link will help you see the, the resources available to get yourself set up, um, as well as the channel ready at Microsoft.com is available to, uh, to support and make sure you get on the eligible partner list for MPO. Uh, just a, a quick note again that it is currently only available in the US. Um, however, Canada, UK uh, coming soon and then rest of the world shortly after. I'm going to wrap up the next uh, this this section with my last section, uh, which is <laughs> on the next slide. It's my favorite section, which is if it's not in partner center, it's not real. Um, this section is just it's it's super critical on the importance of getting your deals in partner center when it comes to co-sell. Um, many times you might see, you might have a relationship with Microsoft seller. You might be talking to that Microsoft seller um, about a particular deal that maybe you haven't put in partner center uh, yet. However, if it's not in partner center, the two of you are the only people that know about that deal. And so for you to really show your impact, show your reach uh, to customers, show the impact that you're having on customers and Microsoft priorities. Super important that it's in partner center because nobody sees it unless it's there. Um, and so I usually start with this like uh, pretty easy little uh, diagram of how deals flow through partner center. So of course lead is identified and uh, qualified qualified deal is shared. That can happen from both Microsoft or the partner. And so you as a partner can share something with Microsoft um, as well as Microsoft can share something with you if they identify something. Um, you have two options. You have an active close sell and a partner led. Um, partner led was direct feedback from partners um, saying that we don't always need help, but sometimes we want to show our impact to Microsoft, show what accounts we're in, show the, the reach of our solutions to Microsoft. So partner led is the option there if you don't actually need um, a direct call to action from a Microsoft seller. It's there to make sure that you can still still show your impact at any point in time. If you had at, at, at a later point in time, if you share a deal and you decide you do need help, you can always upgrade it to active COSO. Um, the other option being active COSO. This is when you have a specific ask of a Microsoft seller. Um, once you make that ask, you make that you share the opportunity, your referral in partner center. They're going to Microsoft sellers going to have 14 days to review and accept it um, and start to engage with you. Um, there's always notifications coming from Partner Center throughout the whole process, and so you stay you stay informed. Um, and essentially, you work with the sales team, Microsoft sales team, to close your deal. Um, ideally, we get to a we get to a close one state solutions transacted through the marketplace, and then rent relevant benefits are applied, of course, to uh, to either you as the partner, uh, the seller, and then incentives are all are all cascaded. I love to add this little blue box in the bottom left corner here. <coughs> Um, I love to add this little blue box in the bottom left corner here of just some best practices um, off the gates of leverage, like leverage, like when things are in partner center, you have a lot of ability to leverage those wins uh, when talking with Microsoft. And so promoting yourself, 
marketing yourself as a company to build new relationships. And so sending out newsletters with all of your wins, um, your wins and your reach, fantastic. Um, when you're when you're on a call with a new 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 seller, um, talking through, hey, we just had this win at this particular account um, last month with your peer over here. Um, being able to reference these wins and the seller being able to see all that all those deals in Partner Center, huge value. Um, and then leading with leading with, of course, that incentive stack and in, in details about your particular uh, particular whether that be average deal size, sales cycle, stuff like that. On the next slide, I'm going to talk through a bit of just some high level best practices um, <clears throat> that I've seen throughout my uh, eight years of, of co-selling. Um, some of these may seem straightforward, but always good to just level set on some of the best practices. So sharing quality pipeline, um, probably the most important thing that you could po possibly do. Um, nothing that's nothing that's kind of aspirational. Um, but really, we're sharing real opportunities with clear ask to a Microsoft seller so that we can get that get that engagement. Quality pipeline, quality in, quality out. So if you ask, if you put quality, quality content into the Microsoft ecosystem, you'll get quality content, quality, quality content collaboration back from it. Um, and so emphasize, emphasizing the quality of the pipeline going in, fantastic. Um, <clears throat> making sure that if you don't actually need Microsoft's help, leveraging partner led, it's a great, um, it's a great, uh, it's a great thing to, uh, to be leveraging. Um, if you don't actually need to help because you don't need to activate a seller. A uh, seller gets a whole bunch of to do's if you if you go with active co-sell and it's best it's best of active co-sell if you do have that clear ask uh, of an engagement. Um, obviously, if it's not in the partner center, if it's not real, right? And so creating and sharing the deal before you're reaching out to, uh, to a seller. Um, partner center has some amazing features, two of which are one you can identify, is it a managed account? prior to even sharing it. So you can know, am I going to get to co-sell on this prior to even sharing it? Um, new feature kind of in the last in the last 12 months that you can see if it's a managed account prior to sharing. And then of course, once it is shared, it gives you the contact at Microsoft, that Microsoft seller's contact that's leading that account. Um, and then uh, Teams, I don't know. And so Helene just posted a question in the, in the, in the uh, chat here. Anyone we should be connecting to help with our co-sell for our teams, teams add-on. Um, I always recommend um, two things. One is going to be if uh, if you're if you're a managed partner, leveraging your PDM um, to help with that. The ISV Success is also a fantastic resource. And so ISV Success helps all ISVs. It's like I always often describe it as the front door to Microsoft. Um, and so leveraging either the PDM if you have one, if you don't, the ISV Success program, uh, if you just type in in the Microsoft uh, Microsoft page, ISV Success, it comes up pretty, pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> but getting back to the best practices, I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, we're not going to go through each of these slide by slide, but if you can just kind of toggle through them, um, I did associate kind of the how to um, for each of these, uh, each of these best practices so that when you get the when you get the PowerPoint after um, you'll be able to kind of see how the how to guide within Partner Center. So if you go to the next slide, it'll talk through creating a referral. Next slide, we'll talk through about just the choosing a active co-sell call to action versus the partner led. Some of the best practices around that. Next slide, we'll talk through how to find that Microsoft contact within Partner Center once you do have an active co-sell deal. And then the final final kind of how to slide will show how do you actually use partner center to look up if it's a managed account um and then finally the takeaways i just want to leave you with here today before i pass it back to uh, pass it back to the team here is on the next slide we'll have just remember that partnerships that you're building here are not transactional they're highly relational and so your their long-term mindset here is building as many relationships within microsoft by showing as much value as you can to uh, to Microsoft and aligning your goals and Microsoft goals to tell that better together story best. Um, and so <clears throat> highly relational relationships that you work, highly relational is what you're working through, not, not these kind of transactional things here and there. Uh, the second thing is it's all about execution. And so you learned a ton here today during this call. Uh, I, I can't expect you to take and do every single thing, but choose one. Just pick one thing and put it into practice. And then once you're good, once you once you're good with that one, choose another one, put that into practice. And then finally, be adaptable. 
uh, we live in a very a constantly changing world. And so being adaptable and able to um, pivot and understand the, some, some of the differences um, as things change, very, very effective. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with, um, I hope you got value from the call here today. And I do recommend, uh, find me on LinkedIn. We put a ton of free content out there to help you co-sell best with Microsoft. We give away a lot of free workshops, uh, kind of co-sell co -sell starters um, workshops on LinkedIn. So uh, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to connect with any, uh, any partners there today. And thanks for having me. Thank you, Reese. Um, before I just kind of wrap us up, we did have another question. Um, if you want to take a, a minute or two to look through some of the questions, also we do have a couple minutes. See if there's cool. anything uh, relevant. But there was a question about, you know, is there a team specifically at Microsoft that you, you know, they sh they should work with regarding uh, marketplace? Uh, they'd like more support on how to best organically grow their marketplace transactions. Do you have any best practices around that? Um. Uh, my always my go to is going to be ISV success team that I, signing up for the ISV success program. Uh, they help walk you through the getting transactable phase and then they start to mature mature through some of those some of those kind of building the building the offering and going to market with it. Um, and then they often have people that they can pull in to uh, drive success uh, for ISVs. Awesome. Taking I'm going to give you just a minute to kind of take a quick look through some of the questions, see if there's anything else. Yeah, uh, I will what? definitely go through the questions and, and answer as many as I see. Awesome. And while Reese is just taking a quick look, um, just a couple reminders. Uh, we will you should be receiving an email uh, by the end of next week uh, with the on demand viewing uh, for this particular session, as well as a PowerPoint link. Uh, in the interim, we have provided you a link in the chat to get today's PowerPoint immediately so that you have the, the resources available to you. Uh, again, our call for next month. Uh, we did have questions on Copilot. Would we go deeper into that today? We didn't have time. Unfortunately, that announcement was made after. Um, you know, we we were already prepared for this call, but we will for sure uh, be addressing that on our next call on February 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, also, just to answer some questions that I have gotten directly from partners about, you know, the slight delay in receiving the on-demand viewing. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we did switch platforms and we do have a very multicultural uh, uh, partner base now, which we're super excited about. So it is going to take us just a little bit of time to make sure we get everything localized and translated into the languages um, of all of our partners. So thanks for the patience uh, in waiting for that. Reese, anything else you want to add or you're you're good to go and you're going to work on some of those questions in the chat? Good. Yeah, good to go. I'm just I'm just going to plow through all of these questions and, and answer answer all the ones that are in the chat here. OK, well, with that, thank you to Reese. Thank you to Rob. Thank you to Wendy Ireland, who is behind the scenes answering a lot of your questions. She also works on our partners program. Uh, and thank you again for taking your time to join us today. Uh, we look forward to being able to bring you uh, more valuable content and interact more closely with you. If you haven't joined our LinkedIn community, please do so. Uh, we keep as much up to date information as we possibly can uh, in that community and using the taxonomy that we shared in this deck, you should be able to search specifically on content that would be relevant to you. So again, thank you. Muchas gracias. Merci. And have a great rest of your day or evening wherever you are located.